The third stage is harder punishments. May they be far from you all. All of this is to keep us from hell, even if it means harder discipline. That's okay so long as hell is not in our future. David's biggest sin was when he lied, committed adultery, or murdered. Nathan came to him and told him the story about the lamb, which you all know, and told him that he, David, is the man in the story and that this time there will be punishment till the end of his life. 2 Samuel chapter 12 Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Meaning, this is a big sin. That said, I forgive you, you won't perish because you will repent. This huge sin will be put on Christ's shoulders. He will pay the price for you, and what an expensive price it will be. Christ will die on your behalf. That said, the punishment won't leave your house because this was a big sin. The second half of David's life was bitter. He saw his children kill each other, and his daughter got raped, and his son wanted to kill him. Hard stuff. David never complained about it, though, because he knew that this was chastening for life, and that it was this chastening which would protect him from going to hell. Moses, if you can believe it, also had a long-term punishment. Before he repented, he killed someone, and then spent 40 years in the Sinai Desert, which is not a small punishment. He became a shepherd after being a prince of Egypt, but when he broke the tablets, he wasn't punished because this anger was holy with a good motive. He couldn't tolerate evil. God wrote them again on other tablets. However, there was another mistake that didn't pass without discipline. Once the Jewish people made Moses angry, nagging and whining in his ear, so he hit the rock with his staff. What happened, Moses? It's a miracle. This rock was a symbol of Christ. He hit the rock angrily, so God told him that he didn't respect him. It wasn't appropriate to deal with the holy things like this. This is why God didn't allow him to go to Canaan. But this punishment was very easy for him. Why? Those great people would see Christ and spend time with him, chit-chatting. So would it make any difference if they see Canaan or be in Sinai? It didn't matter. They understood how heaven works. So from their perspective, this punishment was just to show the people how to behave. But Moses wasn't bothered. Most holy fathers didn't see it a big deal. God brought Moses again in the transfiguration in Canaan, for the Mount of Transfiguration was in Canaan, with Elijah after 1500 years. Another punishment is Samson's punishment. Samson neglected God from the beginning. God kept silent, gave him strength, and let him continue to serve. The first rod that came down on Samson was when the Philistine woman that he married, cheated on him, and went to a Philistine man. That's a rod. But Samson didn't get the message from the rod and continued spoiling himself, thinking that he was the man of God and no one could touch him. But God's strength left him. Delilah cut off his hair, and Samson entered into the phase that comes after the rod. They gouged out his eyes and forced him to grind grain in a mill. He came to his senses and prayed to God not to perish. At the last moment of his life, his strength came back and he completed his mission. He killed the Philistines and died with them. It was a hard punishment, but God didn't let him perish. Jacob needed to be disciplined early on because he was selfish and a liar. He tricked his brother and father. He stole his brother's blessing and deceived his uncle. God used the rod, but he wasn't aware. He wasn't praying. So he was in the abandonment phase early on. The rod came when he was cast away from his father's house. He also got a hard rod via Laban, who fooled him into marrying Leah. So he had to work another seven years to marry the one he wanted, Rachel. Jacob was receiving all these rods because he wasn't returning. He wasn't repenting and praying. God didn't want him to perish. Finally, he was in a corner and cried out in Genesis 32, saying, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Jacob repented and saw Christ, and then the punishment began. But Lord, I repented truly, so why send punishment? God would say, How can I put your name with your grandfather Abraham and your father Isaac? What will the Christians say later on? 
Abraham your friend, Isaac your servant, and Jacob your liar? How can your name fit with those other two? Jacob the what? You need a name for yourself. Therefore, you will have a punishment to pay a small price for what you've done. God disciplined him, Rachel died, Joseph died, and Jacob spent the rest of his life weeping. He said in Genesis 47, Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. Why? God did this so nobody thinks that sin is easy. Sin has consequences. God would rather make Jacob spend his life on earth in sadness if it means he goes to heaven in the end. Pharaoh asked him if he was 700 years old. Jacob said, No, only 130. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. The words few and evil mean I have sinned a lot and been disciplined a lot. This last punishment was the hardest. Joseph was alive, but for 20 years I thought he was dead. That's not a rod. That's much more than any rod in the world. Jacob was disciplined, but didn't perish, and he became a saint. The sick man in Bethesda was living in sin, most likely fornication. God punished him to discipline him. He was sick for 38 years. Then Jesus came and removed the discipline by healing him. Then Jesus met him in the temple to remind him of something. In John chapter 5, verse 14, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. In other words, these 38 years were disciplined for your sins. If you sin again, the worst thing, which is eternal death, will come. Meaning, after the punishment you've already received, there is no other punishment except hell, because you are insisting on it. Gehazi, Elisha's disciple, lived and saw Elisha's life. Elijah's disciple was Elisha. Gehazi should have become a prophet too. He saw miracles every day. Elisha took two times the spirit of Elijah. But Gehazi loved money. Naaman the Aramean tried to give Elisha money, but he refused. Gehazi went after Naaman and lied and told him that they had visitors and needed money. So Naaman gave him, and Gehazi hid them. Elisha asked Gehazi where he was. Gehazi told him that he didn't go anywhere. Gehazi knew very well that Elisha had vision and could see things that are unseen to others. Then Elisha said to him in 2 Kings chapter 5, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Elisha could see what was going on like watching a movie. He sees. He had vision. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. He lived all his life leprous. We don't know if he repented, but he had a very tough punishment. There are some punishments that are harder than the rod. We talked about abandonment, the rod, and punishment. 